Good morning, and welcome to Church of the Holy Spirit Online. In these times of uncertainty, it is very helpful and pleasing that we have this technology that helps us come together on Sunday mornings to pray and hear God's holy word. A couple of quick announcements. Today we are blessed to have Bishop Barker join us, who will be offering us our Sunday message. And I also want to thank all the volunteers yesterday who came out and helped with our mobile food pantry. We served 120 families yesterday, and our next month we will look at doubling the uh, product that we have so that we can serve even more. I do want to remind you that we will be doing normal office hours throughout the week. Uh, if you would like to stop by to drop off your pledge, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, we have had some real blessings this last week as some people have mailed theirs in or stopped by. We really appreciate that. We have bills that keep going, so please, if you are able to, without undue uh, strain on your finances, please continue to send those in. We would greatly appreciate it. Also, for next Sunday, Palm Sunday, at 10.30 following this service, we will have drive up palm receiving. So just pull up to the red doors in the parking lot and somebody will drop off a palm uh, and instructions that you may also use to help fold palms into crosses. So please join us for that. Holy Week, we will offer daily morning prayer. Uh, we will try to offer a reading of the Stations of the Cross as well as a Passion Narrative. I do know that the diocese is working on something right now that maybe we can all, as a diocese, partake in the Triduum, the Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Vigil together online as a diocese. I want to recognize those who had birthdays this past week and those who have birthdays this week. Last week we had Corey, Agne, Madeline, Jennifer, Margie, Darius, Joan and Eric, and this week we have Joe, Zoe, Lee, Stephen, and Lisa. As is our tradition here at Holy Spirit, we offer a little prayer of thanksgiving for their birthdays. O oh God, our time's in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on this your servant as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we did have one couple celebrating an anniversary this past week, Karen and Gary. O oh, gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully on these who have been joined together. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep their promises and vows through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our service today begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer or on the front page of the service bulletin if you downloaded it from our website. Please, if you can, type the word Amen or something to that effect into the comments section today and let us know that you have joined us for worship. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, 
our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Since the, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 130. It can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 784. We will read Psalm 130 in unison. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not with them. After saying this, he told them, 
Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus has already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on that last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here, and he is calling for you. And when she went to him, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, My brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who have opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly distressed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone had been lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Hold thou me, Lord, that I may uplift thee. Amen. The gospel story Father Tom just read for us is one of the most well-known and arresting tales in the whole New Testament. A detailed and emotion-laden account of the most astonishing miracle ever accomplished by the Lord. Lazarus, brother of Mary and Martha, known and loved of Jesus, is suddenly taken ill. His sisters send an urgent word, certain that Christ can help hurry Jesus. But rather than rush to the aid of the sick man, as the sisters desire, Jesus lingers in place for more than two days. And he cryptically tells his disciples that Lazarus has died and that he, Jesus, is glad that I was not there so that you may believe. Eventually, Jesus makes his way to Bethany and Mary and Martha's house. Lazarus is indeed gone, now laid in the tomb for four days. Jesus is confronted by the heartbroken and defeated sisters, both of whom level the same harsh accusation at Jesus. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus is brought to tears the only time we see this in the entirety of the Holy Scriptures. And he asked to see the place where Lazarus has been laid. Upon arriving there, Jesus commands the bystanders to take away the stone, which all but undoes Martha. Lord, she cries, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be too great. But Jesus insists and prevails, encouraging Martha to just believe and praising God in heaven for always listening. Lazarus, come out, cries Jesus. And to the disbelief and wonder of the assembled crowd, the dead man walks out of the tomb still wrapped in his grave clothes. Unbind him, says Jesus. Let him go. We are gathered today in unusual circumstances and an extraordinary moment. Sunday morning never looked quite like this. Church buildings empty, choirs silenced, our participation in worship relegated to watching a screen from home. Much of what we count on and treasure cannot happen just now. We can't catch up with our friends at coffee hour. We cannot share a hug at the exchange of the peace. We cannot receive the precious body and blood of Christ. Yet still we gather, hungry for one another's virtual company, glad for the word of God proclaimed and for all the collected prayers of the faithful people. And certain, because he promised it, that even when two or three are gathered together in his name, Jesus will always come and be a part of that company. We will never, ever forget this strangest of all lengths, which it increasingly appears may stretch beyond the traditional 40 days and delay our celebration of Easter and Christ's resurrection 
to a later date than the one that's circled in red on our calendars. No matter. God gave us brains to think, and we have been given considered advice from well-informed doctors and scientists whose great desire is to protect our human lives. And knowing that ours is a life-giving and life-affirming God, we will continue to fast from worship together for as long as is necessary to protect our neighbors from this disease that is among us. As a wise Western Nebraska friend observed earlier this week, right now, love looks like an empty church. Part of the story we heard this morning is often read at funerals. It's one of just a handful of gospel passages, all from the Gospel of John, that's recommended to be read in our Book of Common Prayers service for the burial of the dead. It's the part of the story that's read at funerals where Martha speaks to Jesus shortly after he arrives in Bethany and reunites with the stricken family of Lazarus. The part where she says, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. No doubt those words were uttered in dismay and disappointment and not a little bit of anger. It's often hard to capture the emotional content of these ancient stories with their strange customs and antiquated ideas and the awkwardness of innumerable translations to get them from the Palestine of 2,000 years ago to the Nebraska of today. But not so in this tragic story. Not so in this intimate moment. And that is why I believe this is a passage that is so often read when we gather to bury the dead. Martha's cry could be the cry of any sister who ever lost a brother too soon. Her cry could be the cry of every mom or dad who ever lost a child out of the natural order of life and death. Her cry could be the anguished keening of every human being across the ages who believed with all their heart and all their mind in the power of our loving God to save us from some unthinkable challenge or terror only to be stung and sunk by God's failure to come and do the miracle for which our heads and our hearts so longed. Martha, you see, was a woman of extraordinary strength and deepest faith. Her cry is as much a confession of her devotion to Jesus and her determination and fierce confidence in his might as it is any accusation or condemnation about his failure to do as she had hoped. If you had been here, my brother would not have died because you have the power. Though Martha and Mary are surely stricken in this moment where they each cry out to Jesus, the story, of course, does not end there. Just as the story of God's interaction with God's beloved human creation never, ever ends in the darkness and despair that is at the shadow of the grave. Martha's accusatory confession of faith will be rewarded. Mary's most cherished hopes will be met. The disciples' confused wonderment will be shockingly cleared up, and the story of Jesus' old friend Lazarus will not be ended by the sudden sickness that overtook him and laid him in the tomb. By the power of God in Christ, Lazarus is raised from the dead. Now note well, my brothers and sisters, that Lazarus dies. He gets sick. He suffers with that illness. His life is imperiled. His people pray and fight for him, and he doesn't make it. 
His death is real, as is the disappointment and the grief and the anger of all those who loved him and hoped for a different end. Suffering, beloved, is a universal part of our human experience, and death is a mysterious and certain part of God's wonderful creation. All that lives will die. We are all created of dust, and to dust we shall return. What Jesus shows us here is the way that he can and does come to fill moments of great human suffering with his healing and loving and deeply graceful presence. With a power and love so awesome that nothing, not even death, can stand in the way of his comforting, life-giving, and reconciling power. I suspect that our lives and the lives of our church will be forever changed by the COVID-19 pandemic that we are living through together this Lent. For many of us, there is already a greatly heightened awareness of the beauty of human life, of simple pleasures, of how precious are our relations with our family and our friends and our neighbors. And for many of us, there is, too, a new and sobering awareness of our own mortality, a reality with which we are now confronted in a barrage of constant media news reporting, news that this time is impossible to dismiss or deny because it is those very same friends and neighbors who we are so cherishing and our own selves whose lives are imperiled by, of all things, a microscopic virus. But my beautiful church, remember who you are. Our story as followers of Jesus Christ made plain in the miraculous tale we tell this day is that this illness does not lead to death. Rather, we believe that our every single prayer is heard and known by God. And that when we suffer, and even when we face death, as we must, God will hasten to our side and be our steady and caring companion through it all. We are a people who believe that we cannot be separated from the love of God. We are a people who believe that God comes and fills our moments of suffering with the full power of divine presence and grace. We are a people who believe that in the end, death has no dominion or power because of the person and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We are a people who know that though we shall all pass through death, we have nothing to fear because Christ is ever and always at our side. Amen. Continuing on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, 
<clears throat> came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form four, found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the focus of the primates task groups call for a period of prayer and repentance in the Anglican communion. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, pray for the Episcopal church women Dicey's Women's Ministries, St. Monica's Home for Women. In the DR, pray for St. Peter and St. Paul Church, St. Anne Church. In the Parish Cycle of Prayer, pray for the Altar Guild. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for our president, Donald Trump, our governor, Pete Ricketts, and the elected officials of the communities in which we love live. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Tom, our priest. Guide them and the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. We remember today those who served our country at home and abroad, especially those who are deployed and those you name now. Those who travel, and you name at this time. Those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Joe, Zoe, Lee, Stephen, Lisa, and others that may be added now. Those celebrating anniversaries this week, and those you name now. Lord, grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up those in our congregation and those we know who are ill, especially Aaron, and other we name now. We also pray for those with special concerns, especially those affected by the coronavirus, the Sinran family, the Kilby family and others we name now. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Mike and others you name now. That your will for them may be fulfilled 
and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Turning to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strength to in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you and, and also, also with you. Please share with those you are with in a safe manner God's peace in your midst. Bishop. Peace. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer D, found on page 372 of the Book of Common Prayer, or in your service bulletin you printed online. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, the living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. 
You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. Beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share these holy gifts, excuse me, grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Continuing on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.